Jonathan, Father Bob Gross. Welcome to St. Aloysius uh, Church. We're here to do our daily update and, and uh, invite you to get online and we'll start our update in a few moments. I'm over in church today, so. We'll start in a few moments. Hello to everyone as they get online. Hello. We'll be starting in a few moments. Yep, welcome. Okay, it's uh, eight o'clock. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to St. Aloysius Church. Usually I do my uh, daily update in my house, but I found myself over here in church. And um, I've begun um, a new portion of the Bible and I'm reading the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, I just got done with chapter four, um, working through the Acts of the Apostles. And today, uh, what I want to do is just bring up a scripture from the Acts of the Apostles that has really been opening up for me. Uh, and I want it to be about the risen Jesus. So this is our state, Sacred Heart statue here at St. Al's. There's the burning heart of Jesus. Here's his wounds. The red represents his humanity. The white represents his divinity. Uh, and I'm just really coming to a conviction um, that the early apostles had, and that is this man is the son of God. And this man died. And three days later, he rose from the dead. And that's what the apostles started to boldly proclaim after the day of Pentecost. And one person who begins it with great boldness, that's a word that's in the Acts of the Apostles four times in chapter four, boldness, is St. Peter. St. Peter begins to boldly proclaim to anyone that he saw, from the authorities to the most common man, that this man, Jesus, who was crucified by the Roman government, has been raised from the dead, and he saw and spent time with and ate with and experienced this man who he knew before he died and was in his presence and saw him and touched him after he was risen from the dead. That's the central claim of Christianity. No other religion on the face of the earth claims that. And Jesus is the fulfillment of all the promises of all the Old Testament. And that's what we're celebrating during this Easter season. That's the basis of the apostolic tradition. You know how we say, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, one holy Catholic and apostolic. And I wanna show you a very short scripture that has all four marks of the church present in one little thing of scripture. And it's at the end of chapter two of the Acts of the Apostles. I just wanted to share that with you, and I want you to realize that what is described as the early church describes the church that you and I are a part of. So here's the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, 
and, the, and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. What you have here are the four marks of the church. One community, one. Holiness is reigning within that little community. One holy cat. It doesn't matter who you're from. Universal. The Lord added to the number of those who were being saved. And it was apostolic. So what this is, is the source of the tradition of the church. It's from this source that the sacred scriptures came from. That the New Testament came from. It's from this experience of the risen Christ. That's where we get the whole idea of revelation, God revealing himself in a tradition, and then in the expression of scripture as one of the expressions of that. That they were willing to tell people that they knew a dead man who's been raised. Now, it's ordinary men, uneducated men, uned uneducated women, really lay people in the sense were the first ones to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Good news. What good news are you willing to shake people's shoulders with? And for the apostles, it was that Jesus was raised from the dead. And that becomes their hope when very quickly in chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six, the first apostles face opposition very quickly. So I just wanted to show this to you. We still do the same thing. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles. That's what we do. The authoritative teaching of the church, which is rooted in the apostles' teaching. The successor of St. Peter, we listen to him. To the bishops who are the successors of the apostles, they possess the apostolic faith. To the communal life, you and I live lives of parish communities. To the breaking of the bread, that was the first name for the mass. They did it in their homes. They broke bread, said the words over those bread and wine, and it became the Eucharist, the body and blood, soul, and divinity. And then the constant prayer that happened. And look from that communal life, look what came out of it. Wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And then from that, they started to share their very livelihood with one another. And they gave up their private property and gave it to the, to the church. Look what we have. We're in a building that's owned by the church. It's not owned by me. It's not owned by just one person. It's owned by us collectively. And then they were devoted to prayer and good works, to faith and good works. Do you see this little scripture is the summary of our lives as Christians. And that's what I want us to focus on more sincerely when we're done with this pandemic. Because miracles can happen again, brothers and sisters. And I think there are so many people because of many different factors that we can talk about on another talk. Many people have not experienced this. The teaching of the apostles, the liberating teaching of the apostles, the communal life of being there for one another, the mass as it is, the encounter with the risen Lord, and the signs and wonders that want to be brought out of people of faith. I think so many Catholics have not experienced that. And that's my prayer that if you join me and join your local pastor, if you're not from our parishes, to be about that after the pandemic, get ready for a second Pentecost. I think that's just so powerful to consider today. So that was kind of a little bit of the fruit of my reflection on Acts of the Apostles. 
And I wanted to share that with you today. So uh, we had a wonderful day. It was a good day, kind of a rainy day. We're thankful for the rain. We had the privilege of burying Darlene Ellsburn today. May God rest her soul and consolation to her family. Please continue to pray for them. It's so difficult to lay to rest someone in such strange times, but they were people of faith, and I could feel the hope of the resurrection in the room that one day, one day Darlene will, will rise from the dead, just like you and I will one day. And then uh, just an update, uh, the Archbishop uh, and his priest council are preparing to have a meeting this Friday uh, to begin discussing how we're going to reopen our parishes. So I really want to ask you for the gift of prayer, intercession, and the gift of obedience as we come towards these decisions that are being made. That's what's going to allow us to come together again, to share parish life again, to grow as Christians again together instead of on online. So that's all I really wanted to share today. Tomorrow is going to be uh, 1130 Rosary, noon mass. Pray for the family of Jermaine Beckman. Uh, they'll be burying her tomorrow with mass just for the immediate family. Pray for them as they do that. And then uh, we'll have an 8 p.m. update tomorrow and I'll have a morning encour encouragement sometime in the morning. I really hope this uh, helps you realize just how powerful it is to believe in the risen Christ. Would you be willing to tell someone that you've encountered the risen Christ? That's what it means to be a Christian. It's first proclaiming him and then the things that flow from him. It's him first and then the shape of our life that comes from believing and trusting our lives to him. It's not the commandments and the rules and the obligations first. It's first being liberated by Jesus in his risen life and that leads us to want to live a certain way in the world. I think we've had it completely backwards for way too long. And I pray this pandemic will help us out of that to a new beginning, a new growth, a new evangelization, a new rebirth of faith as we continue in these days. May God bless you and uh, Mary keep you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, we trust in you. We glorify you, Jesus, the one risen from the dead, the firstborn of the dead. Please be with your people that they may believe in you, trust in you, love you, and hope in you, and to share that faith, hope, and love with others. Be with those who are struggling. Be with those who are losing hope. May you reveal yourself to them as you did Paul on his way to Damascus. And may Almighty God bless you this night, everyone, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Morning encouragement, 1130 Rosary, noon mass, 8 p.m. update. God bless you.